Hello there. Today I have the absolute pleasure of introducing to you the newest member in the dark glass family, the Microtubes Infinity. Let's start this thing with a full disclosure. Dark Dust hit me up one day and asked if I would like to demo something for them. I said yes, they sent me this, and here I am talking about it. They haven't seen this video before release, nor will they have any control over what I say. That should become obvious once we get to the later parts in the video, where we do get a bit of critical. And now that that's out of the way, let's fall right into infinity. The Dark Glass Microtubes Infinity is a one-stop shop for all your bass tones. The pedal has five different preamp modes, of which a few are multiband, meaning that there's a clean bass and the distortion only applies to the mids and the highs. The pedal also features a tuner, a compressor, five slots for impulse responses, six preset slots and a six-band graphic EQ and everything is controllable via MIDI. Everything. The Dark Glass B7K has been a main ingredient in a lot of my tones ever since I first laid my hands on it about six years ago. The tone of the B3K is a really great building block that you can stack different effects on and still retain that same clarity and almost hi-fi top end and bass. I might even dare say that it's the most versatile distortion Dark Glass has ever made. And with the addition of seamless preset switching, a tuner and a compressor, this pedal feels like it could replace my entire rig in a pinch. And it can also fit inside a gig bag, uh, unlike my current already quite compact pedal board. Now let's hear one more sound sample and then we'll go over the different preamp modes. There are five different preamp modes inside the Microtubes Infinity, and those represent the entire Microtubes range of pedals. There's the B3K version 2, the vintage Microtubes, and then we have both of those in multiband mode, with a clean bass and distorted mids and highs. In addition to these four familiar distortion modes, there's also an entirely new clean preamp, which can go from warm and round to tight, clanky and pushed, just by turning the drive knob. Now, you've already heard the clean tube preamp, and the vintage microtubes, and the B3K version 2 modes. So let's go over the multiband modes and get some tones. <laughs>
Once you get your own microtubes in Infinity, you should connect it to your computer to check for updates and go over the settings they offer in the Dark Glass suite. Here's what I'd suggest doing. First off, the cabinet impulses that the Dark Glass microtubes in Infinity comes preloaded with didn't sound that good to me. Luckily, you can load in your own impulse responses or use any of the many options Dark Glass provides. Here's a list of impulse responses I found lovely, balanced and a really good baseline for building your own tones. All of these are included in the Dark Glass suite for free. And then there's the built-in noise gate. And I think you might as well just turn it on. I mean, it never hurts to have less hiss in your tones and cleaner breaks. Under the presets menu, you have control over your compressor and its attack and release times. For some reason, this pedal ships with both at the attack and release times maxed out at their fastest setting. This will just kill your attack and get rid of all the punch in your zone. Essentially, the compressor is acting as a limiter at that point. My suggestion is to back off the attack time a bit. I seem to like it at around 3 or 4, depending on the tone. This way the compressor lets the initial attack through and emphasizes punch and gives your bass lines more definition. For softer tones and for controlling your attack, you can always dial in a more aggressive attack setting and slow down the release setting, but these are the basic settings that work for me. The grunt switch and the mid boost switch found on the physical B3K version 2 pedal are also hidden inside the software and I highly suggest that you turn on the mid-boost option the first chance you get. Without it, the B3K distortion mode is going to sound quite scooped, and I found it rather hard to dial in a balanced tone without the top end becoming really fizzy. Inside the app you can also control the input volume by the passive and active switch, and then there's also the option of placing the cabinet simulation either before the blend knob on the distortion side or after the blend knob so it affects both channels. For the multiband distortion modes the high and low pass filters are also located here. And then in the settings you can find routing settings. I didn't know any of these pedals have these and they are amazing. You can set the XLR out to either contain the full sound of the pedal that's processed through the distortion cab sim and EQ, or you can set the XLR out to bypass, in which case it functions as a DI. And then the balanced outputs. Mm. You can set the, both the left and right to have either the full processed sound, the bypassed sound, the processed sound without the cab sim, or you can have one put out the clean tone and one put out the distortion tone. And then you can mix and match those in your DAW for the ultimate control. So, should you buy this pedal? The answer for me is a resounding yes, if you need it. On the tone front, this pedal offers little new, but it does do a great job in packaging a lot of cool sounds into a compact and intuitive form. On a lot of gigs, you can get away with just packing this pedal and your instrument. That's a huge plus considering especially that this pedal can fit into your gig bag. The Ultra Series pedals kinda already did this, but trying to balance the clean and the distortion tones in those was a huge mess and it was near impossible, because every time you put the clean on, you'd need a different EQ, and those pedals didn't offer that. The B3K distortion mode and the clean preamp would have alone made this a worthwhile purchase for me, 
but finally having access to the vintage microtubes is also quite nice. I feel like the firmware still needs a bit of tweaking though. The compression knob has an advanced gain compensation in place and what that means is that when you're increasing or decreasing the amount of compression the perceived volume levels should stay the same. However, I found that in my device at least when you get from uh, one, 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock on the compression knob you get a substantial volume boost. If you dial in more compression the effect disappears and the volume returns to normal. So it only applies on this very narrow area. Another critique of mine is that for some reason the clean blend is super loud. I found that on my distorted presets I had to set the blend knob to around 90% of its range to even remotely balance out the clean and the distorted signal. Right now you can also distort the output transformer quite easily by turning the level of the pedal past 12. Luckily, since the processing is fully digital, it shouldn't be a problem to tweak these parameters later on. From what we've seen Darkless do with the Exponent 500, the Elements and even the Atom, I think it's safe to say that there will most probably be more updates down the line. Right now I'll give this pedal a solid 9 out of 10 by and a points. It definitely nails the dark glass microtubes tones, it's easy to use and dial, and I can see myself using this a lot in the future. I'm deducting some points from the poor factory presets and the fact that out of the box the compressor settings are pretty wild. Once we get the few software bugs ironed out though, it's going to be a killer deal. If you're looking to buy this pedal, be sure to grab the presets I made for this video. Those are linked in the description. Also tune in next week when we dial in more presets for some of the projects I've been working on. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you later.